I was actually in the compartment when I heard about it. And of course, uh, it came over the one MC, which is the speakers on the ship, that the captain had made an announcement for all the blacks to go to the galley and all the marines to report to the forecastle. And we had no idea, well, I had no idea why or what we were going there and everything. And they kept making this announcement as they go through. And of course, on the way there, you would see a little tension between uh, the, the different races. You know, uh, there would be some fighting, uh, shoving, things of that nature. And then, of course, they request to have the hatches dogged down when the individuals was going to, you know, get into the space. And they wanted the Marines to lock them down, but then they changed that because the, from what we heard in the galley, the fight started over a black guy being escorted with um, cuffs on by a Marine that, and, and, and I want to say he was actually from like West Virginia somewhere and uh, who had never, he'd seen a black person. And, and that's one of the things in the military, a lot of people actually had the opportunity to get involved and work with people that they only seen on TV or in magazines, and but they never really worked with them. And, and that was something that actually <clears throat> changed the tension as well as the crews continued to go on. It was like a tolerance thing up until a certain point. Then it was like uh, either, you know, you're getting on my nerve, or I don't like you, I don't care. All these type of things would come out uh, as the crews got a little longer. So when we were in the galley, we actually heard that uh, there was one of the Marines that uh, was being escorted. And we always, when we seen another black, because there were very few blacks uh, in the Navy, as you mentioned earlier. And I would say they were maybe 250, if that many, black personnel on the ship that had close to 3,000. Uh, there was one officer, uh, Lieutenant uh, McKinley, who of course was shot down in Vietnam, so we only had one officer at that time. There were a couple senior uh, blacks that uh, I knew, but very, very few of us, and the majority of them were E1s, E2s, E3s. And we heard that uh, whenever we would see one another, we would always say, you know, like a hello. A perfect example of what we used to do to greet one another is what they're doing on the football field now. And we call it giving each other dap. And we would actually have different ways that we would do the handshake and things like that. And uh, you could identify what ship an individual was from by the dap that they did. You would also identify what squadron they were from by the dap that they did. And then, of course, if you became friend of someone in that squadron, they would teach you their dap. And, of course, uh, when you meet someone in that squadron or whatever, you can actually go through that. And uh, they would hold lines up sometime when we're doing the dap because if they, if we, and we're coming down that way, it was, you know, we're going to do the dap before we go by. And, and it caused a little tension with that as well. And this Marine that uh, was escorting this black had his hand to a couple of the other blacks that was on the hangar bay. And the Marine said he thought the guy was going to attack him. And of course he wasn't privy to it or wasn't on the ship long enough. At the point when he started uh, hitting him with his uh, the stick, a couple of the other blacks on there said they went over to defend him because the guy was beating him with the stick. And then all of a sudden, he wanted to escape. Like, where are you going in the middle of the ocean? <laughs> and they were trying to capture him, was the story. And during that time, that's when the Marines were let out, and they were actually uh, attacking other blacks. And then, of course, uh, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Just, just you know, people were just fighting. And that's why the captain actually requested you know, to kind of separate these two groups. And uh, we stayed in there. Uh, it was a good while because we started hearing a lot of things that was going on where they were going through the ship with the, uh, on the hose, they had a, an extension. And when you fight the fire, this metal part that actually goes up and it bends over. And they said uh, individuals was going through the burden area just, you know, 
uh, hitting people and sticking them with these uh, these iron poles. And it was some of everybody, because some of the blacks were still in their racks. And of course, so they were being attacked, and of course the whites were being attacked, so it was, it was a really a total mess of what was going on. Whether in fact that is the actual truth of what happened, we felt that it was because that's what we did. And then of course when we found out that the guy had just, the Marine, uh, had never worked around any other blacks or anything before, uh, that it very possible could have been what, uh, what caused it. Then they started looting. They started uh, going through the stores and start stealing things. And uh, to my knowledge, the only individuals that was charged was those individuals. And of course, uh, here again, as bad as the guy that wanted to escape on the ship, you're going to loot because they got you know TV stores and all this stuff on there. And uh, of course, at that time, they had eight tracks. <laughs> yep. And, you know, you're going to steal these items and you take them to this little birthing space you got. And where are you going to store these things, you know? So when they came in with the investigation, those are the ones that had this property that was the one that was actually, you know, arrested uh, and taken down other than the Marine and the uh, the prisoner and the guys that was on the hangar bay that got involved with it and things of that nature. They all went in uh, for... Uh, Further the investigation, all of that was done off the ship.